Welcome to another Blender tutorial and today we're going to look at some tips that are really going to help you when you're using Blender for all kinds of designing. Now if you're a novice or a complete beginner, these tips are really going to elevate your workflow to that next step. But before that, a quick word from today's sponsor about an awesome screen recording and video editing software by Wondershare. Demo Creator 4.0 is perfect for making tutorials such as you see on my channel but also things like demo videos, presentation recordings, gaming, vlogs, and just about anything you see on YouTube. You can easily add annotations and other editing elements in post-production. One great feature of Demo Creator 4 is that you can record your screen, or you can even record your webcam, and then you're ready to go live. Something that I've been thinking about implementing in future content is the use of green screens. But yeah, Demo Creator 4 is simple to use and you can grab it via the link down below in the description box. You can also check out the tutorials on Demo Creator 4 as well. So give it a try today. So the first tip is to do with the layout or the UI of Blender and we're gonna break up some windows for an optimum workflow. So just like in Adobe Illustrator at the very top here, we have different presets. So like in Illustrator, you might have uh, printing or layouts and so forth. And of course, each of these windows correlates exactly to the kind of render that you're gonna be working on. And so to make our own workspace, we're going to come over to the gutter here and right click, and then use a horizontal split. We could of course use a vertical split as well. We can actually come to the center gutter, right click and join these areas. Knowing how to merge windows in Blender is going to make your life a whole lot easier when you're working on renders and designs. Let's quickly repeat the same process with a vertical split. And we're actually going to change the right hand window to a different purpose. And we can do that in the editor type menu. Now we have a lot of options available open to us and let's go for a shader editor. So now I have two windows open on my program and I can actually save this as a preset. And to do that, you come up to here, right click and then duplicate. Then it's just a case of renaming that new layer preset. And now we have a new layout preset, just like an illustrator. However, when you open up a new copy of Blender, this layout isn't gonna be there, which brings us on to the next tip in today's video. Now, many of you realize or have seen that when you open up Blender, you do start with a cube, but on my screen, that's not what I'm starting with. I actually start up with things as you can see on screen right now with a sphere and so forth. And to make sure that Blender starts up in a preset that you want to use, come up here to File, Defaults, and then Save Startup File. And now every time you open Blender, this new layout that you've just created will be the startup default. And so to save time, you can literally create different layouts for different kinds of projects, you know, different nodes and so forth, and then just save them so you can start up with them whenever you want. Now we can actually remove this double window setup like we did before by coming up to here and clicking and dragging to merge them. And so moving on to the next tip that's gonna be really invaluable to you and your workflow in Blender. You must realize that Blender is a really hotkey orientated program, much like Adobe Illustrator with lots of the keyboard shortcuts. However, it can be daunting to people coming into the program, you know, as a novice or a beginner, because there are just so many different hotkeys. Blender does have a really cool and intuitive way around that. Blender actually has a search function and is something I would like to see in Illustrator at some point. And that can be accessed by hitting function three on your keyboard. And that's gonna bring up this window here and we could give a search for different kinds of functions or things in Blender. So as an example, let's have a look at adding a sphere. And you can see we have four different options for adding a sphere. Now, of course, the first one will add an empty sphere. And we're actually going to look at a mesh UV sphere here. And as you can see, we've added a UV sphere to our Blender scene. And this search bar is really useful and intuitive. And I think it's a great addition to the program. 
So let's look at this one more time by pressing again function and three. Let's just give a random letter search of J. And as you can see, it's bringing up the join function and also a force field function. We have here the keyboard shortcuts and it would be useful to remember all of these, but this search term window is highly, highly useful. In parallel to Illustrator, you can actually assign your own keyboard shortcuts when working in Blender. And to do that, navigate to a function and example here, the gravity function, right click it and then navigate down to assign shortcut. And this will work for most functions in Blender, but some aren't going to be receptive to this. We can also add a shortcut to our quick favorites. And as an example here, we're gonna go for a mesh and then a cube. And then we can right click that and add it to a quick favorites. So when you press Q for quick favorites, you're gonna have something here, which is what you've assigned. As you can see, my cube option is right here for me to use. So that's a really nice little feature added into Blender. Now the next tip today revolves around rendering and a lot of people will like to render through EV or cycles. However, there are a few more render engines that you can plug into Blender. And often what people would do when they just want to have a proof or kind of a glimpse at the render, they will spend ages rendering out the scene when it's just, a, it's just meant to be a quick look, it's not meant to be the final render. But something that makes more sense would be to come over here to the output properties and then turn down the percentage of the resolution to maybe 25% or something. And a quick side note, in Blender, like in Illustrator, you can also do multiplication and division and loads of mathematical equations within these percentages here. So 25% would be 100 divided by four, of course. And of course, this 25% means that the render is going to be 25% of this full 1080p resolution. And remember, this is just for rendering a quick preview of how things are looking. And we can give that a quick try by pressing function 12 on the keyboard and we have a quick snapshot of how things are looking. And as you can tell, it did do that pretty quickly. And if you have a really, you know, complicated and busy scene, it just makes sense to lower the percentage here for a quick look. Just for reference, let's try the same command, but at 100% resolution. So as you can see, that actually required six seconds to complete. And this is a very simple, very basic scene. So you can imagine if you're working on a very large project, the difference would be, you know, really valuable. And of course, when you're working on a project, you are gonna want to be checking the lighting and the colors and everything as you go. So it is gonna be a huge time saver for you to actually lower that percentage of the resolution. But you should remember to turn it back to 100% when you commit to the final render. And the next tip is being organized when working in Blender. Blender can quickly become very cluttered with objects and lights and so forth. And it's important that we actually keep track of things as we work. And one great way to do that is within the outliner found here. It's much like the layers panel in Illustrator. You want to be renaming things as you go so you can keep tabs and track of how your project is moving on. So you can just double click a circle as example and rename it to something relevant to your project. Also in the outliner, you can search for specific parts of your project up here and it will automatically locate that part of your design. This is a really powerful addition to the program. In addition to this, you might have noticed that my base plate actually changed color when I renamed it. And that's because I've set Blender up to assign random colors to the string of the object. And it's just a really intuitive, you know, way to work with unique objects and identifying them. If you had all objects the same color as in this kind of pale blue, it would start to become complex and not very intuitive to work with. And to activate this in Blender, all you need to do is in solid mode, come up to shading and then come down to color and then click random. By default, it should be set to material, but I personally go for random just to give that diversity in objects. So there are some really useful workflow tips when working in Blender. 
If you'd like to see more videos just like today's, do let me know down below and also click a video on screen to learn something else. And until next time, design your future today. Peace.